today, I'd like to speak to you from the Word of God from 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. And it reads thus, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Today I would like to speak on a few subjects that is entailed in this, what I thought in this message. And one of them is, when the odds are against us, or against all odds, And against all odds, we got to encourage ourselves in the Lord, our God. And all these things could be summarized in two words. Take courage. Take courage. The main character in this setting today, spiritual, a scriptural setting, is David. David. Many of us know a lot of story about David. Well, I like just to outline a few highlights about David and his life. David was one of the sons of Jesse. And he grew up and became a shepherd boy. Looking after or taking care of sheep in the pasture. Many of us from the Caribbean... We know what it is to have sheep, small animals, and to have them in the pasture. One day, David encountered an attack of a lion and a bear against his flock. Because these are ferocious animals, bear and, and lions. And, it, and uh, the bear and the lion took a lamb out of David's flock. And David said, I went out and took the lion and took the, the lamb from the bear out of his mouth. And the bear retaliated by attacking David. And David said, I caught him by the bear and smote him and slew him. He said, he, slay, he, he said that he slay both the lion and the bear. That's very being courageous. Because these animals are very dangerous animals. But because the anointing of God was on David, he was able to slay the bear and the lion. And the Bible says that the anointing shall break every yoke. Paul, in his experience and in writing, said to the Ephesians, I fought with men at Ephesus like wild beasts to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not easy to come up for people to come up against you when you're in trouble. Or when you, you're confused, you don't know what to do. The odds are against you. It's not easy to defend yourself. But with God, we can do all things. And with God, all things are possible. David was not a popular brother or sibling to his family. He was rejected by them. 
David was not popular, but he was special. You didn't hear him. David was not popular, but he was special. Sometimes we look for popularity amongst our brethren. We don't have to be popular. Just be special. Be different. Sometimes popularity is not the best option. Be special. Be God's special child. And I make a reference to Daniel, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego, and when I heard the Sunday school teacher touching that subject, I said, Lord, thank you. <laughs> Confirmation. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was not popular in Babylon, but they were different and special. They had courage. When they went to Babylon, the king Nebuchadnezzar had all kind of orderly ways of presenting himself as king and to, to develop his kingdom. But these boys were there for a divine purpose. They were there for this divine purpose. Daniel, first of all, purpose in his heart. That he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor the wine which he drank. Because Babylon really is confusion. That's the meaning of Babylon, confusion. And they worship many different idols and gods. And Daniel did not want to get himself mixed up with the different gods because Daniel was taught and knew that there was only one true and living God. That's the God of heaven and of earth. And we know that as well. There's a little course that we sang when we were going to Sunday school. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm. And dare to make it known. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. When he made he, the music... And the musicians played. They were to bow down to a golden image. But the Hebrew boys were taught not to bow to any other God beside the true and living God. But here, Nebuchadnezzar, musicians played the music. And these three men were to bow. And when he, they were questioned by the king. And he said, we are not careful. They answered and said, king, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Because they were threatened to be thrown in the fiery furnace. That was hot, that was heated, seven times hotter. But that's God's perfect number by which he works. Seven is God's perfect number. Six is man's number. Seven is God's number. And they answered the king and said, if it be so, our, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the, from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of the hand of you, O king. But if perhaps God then does not deliver us, we're still not going to bow. Okay. We're not going to serve other gods. We're going to serve the true and living God. We're not going to worship your golden image because we were not taught to worship images and idols. We're going to stand to our conviction and we're going to stand firm. And whether God deliver us or not, we are not going to bow. And brethren, we have to take a stand many times for the purpose of God. We cannot compromise. We cannot stand on the side of the enemy. We are to stand on God's side. Because he that stands with God, God will stand with him or her. 
The three Hebrew boys had courage. And I love that. Because in these last days, brethren, we need courage to go on this Christian pathway. Courage. There are a lot of things around us to discourage us. But we need courage. The Bible says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Sometimes we have to wait for, we pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to do something for us, to heal us, to save our unsaved brethren, friends, and families. But when we put it before the Lord, we leave it in the hands of God. And in his own time, he will do what we ask him to do for us. God is not a God afar off. He's a very God very close to us. And sometimes we pray and we pray and we pray about God the same thing. If we have faith in our prayers, we pray and we leave it in the hands of God. And he will work it out in his own time. Paul, David said, Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Be of good courage. And that is what the church needs today. Need to be encouraged. The blacksmith and the silversmith and the, uh, the coppersmith encourage one another in their, in their work and in their profession. And that is what we need as Christians, to encourage one another to serve the Lord, to go on. So be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Queen Esther was a woman of destiny, purpose, and courage. Queen Esther. When Haman had planned to destroy the Jews, Esther was queen. Esther planned to go in to see the king. To make rep representation for her people, the Jews. And she had courage because it was not the time to go into the king. And if anyone goes into the king at a time that is not appointed, they will be killed. But Esther had a determination. And Esther had a made up mind. And she said, I will go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. We have to have a determination, my brothers and sisters. We have to have a made up mind. Because no hopes will come to us if we go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was courage on behalf of Queen Esther. She risked her life. And God did not fail her. Anything that you and I give up. To serve the Lord. We will not be the worse for it. We will be the better for it. David. Tried to please King Saul. But he was not accepted even when he played the music on his harp to calm Saul who had an evil spirit that troubled him. Saul tried to kill David. My Bible says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up or raise up a standard of authority. Against him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the scripture goes on to say. That no weapon. Hallelujah. That is formed against. You and me. Shall prosper. Hallelujah. And every tongue that shall rise up. Against us. In judgment. God shall condemn. Hallelujah. Bring to naught. Yes. Make light of. Hallelujah. Make ineffective. Right. Bring to naught. The Bible also says when the enemy comes in one way, they shall flee seven ways. 
Hallelujah. So we are more than conquerors, brethren. We are more than claim your authority in Jesus Christ as a child of God. We are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us and gave himself for us. There was a time when the Philistines came up against the children of Israel to fight war. And the Philistinians and the Philistine Philistinian leader was a giant called Goliath. But there was a David. Because God always have a man, a woman somewhere to fulfill his cause. And when the hill, he came to the battle, the, the, the boys, his brothers, asked him, what, do you, what, what are you doing here? In my own words. You have left those poor little sheep and come. He said, is there another cause? Hallelujah. 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 There is always a cause, a purpose in God's kingdom for us, brother, sister. Let me just need to find out that cause and that purpose and fulfill it. Amen. There was a cause for David to leave those sheep and come to see how his brother was, brethren were fair off. Hallelujah. David the shepherd boy, the little stripling. According to 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 56. Came from the back part of the desert. And saw the battle going on. And he drew near. Because he was God's man for the hour. He was God's man for the time. The, 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 the Israelites were backing off. From, from this great Goliath. He was tall. He was a, he, 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 he was a, star, a big person. He was a giant. And David drew close. And shouted for the battle. In other words he said a word of encouragement to his boys. He must have said boys fight on. David must have encouraged his brothers to fight in the war, in the battle. David not only encouraged his brethren, but he himself took up the challenge to fight against the giant Goliath. Because the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a, share, a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of, of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And no one can fight against God and win. Joseph Nye says he's the winner man. The winner man all the time. The scripture says, And he, David, took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had even in a scrip and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine or to Goliath, the giant. Joseph, um, David showed courage and manifested his willingness to fight in the battle. And it came to pass when the Philistines rose and came and drew nigh to, to meet David, that David hasted. David was not discouraged. David was bold. And we got to be bold for Christ. Because the man, the senior man out there is bold for what he's doing. He's not ashamed. And not backing down. We got to be bold for Christ. And David ran toward the army to meet the Philistine or the Goliath, the giant. What great courage. With this courage, 
David defeated the enemy of Israel and won the battle over the Philistines. David had confidence in his God. With confidence and a simple act of faith, David won the, the victory and won the battle. The word of the Lord says, And David put his hand in his bag and took three there a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine or Goliath in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. You see, when we are doing things in the, in, in, in the will of God, we don't hit and miss. <laughs> God is a God of design, productivity, and purpose. Precision. Pastor, <laughs> we don't hit and miss, so we hit the devil bullseye. Hallelujah! Amen! 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 Hallelujah! Right on. And the giant fell upon his face to the earth, to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine. With a sling and with a stone. Simple, simple things. But you see, God have a way of, of using simple things and make them great. Yes. Present it to God. No matter how simple you might think you'll be in the church of the living God. Present what you have to God. Whether it's a testimony, whether it's a singing, whether it's a, a, a clapping of hands or knocking the timbrel. Whatever. It seems simple. But present what you're doing to God and God will enlarge it. And enlarge your borders. Amen. Hallelujah. When God is in it. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone. And smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. And I'll tell you something. That God is going to use what the devil have. And make his own destruction. Hallelujah. Amen. David didn't have no sword. But he used the sword of Goliath and cut off his head. Don't play with the devil. He's for real. And you got to destroy him. Hallelujah. If I may use an analogy. The five smooth stones. As it were. Represented. These five letter words. J Jesus. And faith. Jesus and faith. Two five letter words. In other words, faith in Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -E -S, five letters, and they, re they can represent the five smooth stones. But David only used one. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Daniel said, Daniel said, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Brethren, it's not telling what God will do and can do amongst us. God does not work with the many nor the few. God will work with the faithful. Paul said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor. Of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor. Saul was trying to put on his armor on David. But we cannot wear what the devil, what God does not authorize us to, to wear and to do. We put on his armor, his God's armor. Carnal armor cannot fight the devil. You're gonna lose. Even before you fight, you're going to lose. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. 
These are the powers which we are fighting against. And that brings us discouragement. Paul went on to say, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These are the things that come against us. Principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are the forces that we as Christians, children of God, are fighting against. Powers. Spiritual wickedness in high places. In the realm of, 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 of the heavenlies. Remember when Daniel was pray, praying and he, 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 God released the answer from heaven uh, and, and he had to send Gabriel, Michael the archangel, to release the answer to, for, for Daniel. And he said, Daniel, your prayers have been heard a long time. But there's a prince of the per Persia of the air that held back the answer. And he sent Michael, one of the great, greatest archangels, and released the prayers. That Daniel was praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes our prayer seems as if you're just reaching up uh, into the sky or reaching up to the, to the roof and coming back down. Sometimes it seems so hard. Sometimes the devil does not want us to pray as we ought. But the, the scripture says men ought always to pray and not to faint. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Humanly speaking. But spiritual wickedness in high places. And Paul continued to admonish us. Because we are fighting against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take Unto you the whole armor of God. Not part. The whole armor of God. Why? That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand. The armor consists of having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. We, gotta put, we can't put on part of the armor and win. And go into battle. We've got to put on the whole armor of God. That we may be able to withstand in the evil day. And I notice in this chapter, in this setting... That there is no armor for the back. There's armor for the front. Because God does not want us to turn our backs to the enemy. God, God doesn't expect us to be defeated. So there's no turning back. He didn't provide any, 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 any armor for the back. So we've got to face face. Our enemy head on. Amen. Amen. Your feet. Shod with the preparation of the gospel. Of peace. We must be prepared to spread. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Winning the loss. At any cost. Hallelujah. We must be. Prepared to give a word and to represent the cause of Christ. Wherever we go, we ought not to be ashamed. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the dunamis, the power of God to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So we must be prepared to share a word to someone about Christ and his salvation. Paul says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench 
all the fiery darts of the wicked, the shield of faith. We must have faith. And the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And for by it, the elders receive a good report. And Paul went on to say, and take the helmet, which is for the head. Helmet of salvation. Because our head is where our intelligence is. That's where the brain operates. So spiritually speaking, we must have on our helmet. Because the enemy is going to try to deceive us and put different thoughts into our minds. Because up here is the controlling of our entire body. The head. That's where we think. That's where we conceive ideas. So put on the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit. And the Bible says that the word of God is quicker and sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing and dividing asunder of the marrow and the bones. And is a, deceive, is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. Even things that we, 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 thought, we never thought of close by year, time before we think about it. God knows that it was in our, it's in our thoughts. Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying. Always. See a lot of, you see, you see why the church defeat a lot of people? Because a lot of people don't love prayer meeting. Some people, some Christians are Sunday going to meet him Christians. They will come to Sunday, but tell them about prayer or Bible study. They're not really so zealous about that. But the Bible says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching there too. With all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You see, the enemy will beat us when we are off, when we just perhaps just standing and going through the motion. But when we are on a prayer, when we are praying people, the devil hates and the devil will run from us when we are praying people. We must love prayer. Especially in these last days. Supplication. At times when we cannot go down our knees. We cannot bend our head to pray. But if we supplicate. is Our spirits meeting with God's spirit. Supplicate with God. We meditate on God. And his word. And watching there unto with all perseverance. Or endurance. And supplication for all saints. If we do these things, brethren, we will not fail. We will stand the test of time. At this point in time, David was returning from war with his 600 men. And saw an unusual sight. And what was this unusual sight? There was a big blaze and a fire that was set up in Ziglag. The Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. Imagine, imagine people will burn an entire city. There are so many lost. Lives, properties, investments. But David, the scripture says, encouraged himself in the Lord. Because when he saw the destruction, and when he was accused of being blamed for what happened, uh, this fire that was at Ziglag. Because sometimes, brethren, it's easy to accuse. 
But we must understand sometimes the circumstance by which things are done or things are not done. Both, both, both ways. David was in a battle and he was not returning. And he saw that there, that Ziglag was on fire. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. There was great weeping and lamentation at this destruction. But when you stand, you and I stand alone in our circumstances, God stands with us. Or the Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Stand up. Song says, stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Stand up. Stand firm. David stood firm. He was accused. He was ostracized. He was up for being stoned to death. But David stood his ground and trusted in the Lord his God. I love this part. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Brethren, when we see what is going on in the world today, there's a lot of things to discourage us. When we see how even some Christians are living today, we get discouraged and we, we ourselves want to pack it up. But brethren, I want to encourage us today. Hold fast. The profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful. That promise, he promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. David was all alone. He was greatly distressed, and naturally so. He's a human being. But his trust was in the name of the Lord, his God. Trust ye in the Lord Jehovah. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. David not only encouraged himself in the Lord his God. But David inquired at the Lord. Saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? You see, we got to get, we got to ask, we, we, we got to get in conversation with the Lord but our relationship must be good enough that we can question God we must build a good relationship with the Lord so we can question him because indeed he has the answer to our problems sometimes we think our problems are unsurmountable, our problems are great and, 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 and there's no answer God has the answer to every problem he's a problem solver he's a specialist in problems so David, inqui David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue. When you have a word from the Lord, as we sang, we need to hear from God. When you have a word from the Lord, you work with it, you run with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Run with the message when you get a word from the Lord. When the Lord has put something into your spirit and into my spirit, just do what he says. Amen. Mary, the mother of Jesus, told the folks at the, at the wedding, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Hallelujah. When you have a word from God, what he says to you, say it. What he tells you to do, do it. Amen. Hallelujah. He promised he will be with you. If he call you, he will equip you. Amen. 
And David also pursued he and his 400 men. So David encouraged himself. David inquired of the Lord. And David pursued he and 400 men. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. The Lord our God is a God who restores. He said, and I will restore to you the years that the canker, that the locust hath eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, God will restore those things that we have lost. His restorer. The lady that had the ten pieces of silver and she lost it in the house. She went and swept every place until she found it. Whatever we have lost in Christ, he can restore it to us. If you're here today, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, he will give you joy. And those who have known him and have gone back on him, he will restore you to your former state. So he will restore the years, the locusts, the caterpillar, the canker worm, and the palmer worm. The God will restore. He's more than able. This is David who said, he restoreth my soul. Hallelujah. In Psalm 23, he restoreth my soul. David had his down moments but he said why art thou cast down O my soul and why art thou disquieted within me hope thou in God for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God you have to speak to your own soul and to your spirit to serve the Lord because the devil is going to tell you give up So you got to speak to your own soul and said, I am determined to serve him to the end. I know he's with me and will be with me to the end. Hallelujah. So David called out to his soul because the best of us get discouraged. There's no one who tells me to serve in the Lord that at some point in time we don't get discouraged. But our trust is in God. Amen. Jeremiah the prophet was discouraged and decided that he was not going to speak anymore in the name of the Lord. But he declared that the word was like fire. Shut up, Shut up within his bones. Sometimes we are pressured into circumstances and sometimes God does not come to us as the time when we want him and we feel like hanging up and giving up and so on. That's human. But there's a spirit, as the song, the chorus says, something deep down within me telling me to go on. Hallelujah. The devil will always try to use discouragement to get us to go back. But something deep down within us telling us to go on. So when Jeremiah had made a decision not to say nothing else, but to pack it up and to give up the preaching of the word, the word was with was fire shut up within his bone and he could not contain it. He had to speak it. He had to speak it out. The challenges of the times in which we live could bring us into discouragement the times in which we live the Bible says in the last days perilous times shall come according to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 but let us not be discouraged let us take courage and let us have faith in God because faith in God can move a mighty mountain 
And faith can calm the troubled sea. Faith can make the desert like a fountain. And faith can give us the victory. Have faith in God. And be not discouraged. For God is on our side. And if God be for us, who can be against us? May God help us today to take courage. Take courage, my brothers and sisters. Time is short. We are nearing the end. There's no time to turn back. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful, that promise. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a restorer. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we lose so much, but God promised to restore unto us. Amen. The ears, the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. All these worms, all these armies at up. But God is a restorer today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You might be in this house today. Amen. And you need a restoration in your life. It could be in your spiritual life. It could be in your finance. It could be in any way. Amen. You want the Lord to restore you today. Amen. I'm glad for David, man. He picked up himself when they thought of stoning him. They just got so frustrated. These army men wept until they had no more strength to weep. They were so frustrated. They were so angry. They were so hopeless. But God sent a word to pursue and you shall recover all. Amen. Amen. And they mustered up courage. They mustered up strength. Amen. Amen. And they went into the enemy's camp and the Bible says they recovered all. Amen. Hallelujah. They recovered all. Amen. Hallelujah. And God wants his children to recover all today. Whatever you have lost, whatever the enemy took from you, today's restoration there for somebody. Amen. If you want the Lord to restore what you have lost, you can make your way down to this altar. We're going to pray before we go. Amen. Somebody need restoration in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell him what you want him to do for you on your behalf. Amen. Hallelujah, God, I lost my joy. Lord, I lost my peace. Lord, I lost my, 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 my spiritual life, God. Oh, God, restore to me. Hallelujah. The joy of my salvation. Oh, God, everything the devil's stolen from me. I'm not satisfied. I'm not going to stay here in this condition. I will not just sit here and die. I believe the Lord for restoration. I believe that the Lord is saying, pursue and you will recover all. Hallelujah. Do it for your people today, God. You are a restoration, God. You are a restoration, God. You did it for David and his army, Lord. You can do it for your children today. Wherever the enemy came in like a flood. Hallelujah. Spirit of the Lord, lift up a standard against him. Cancel his program. Cancel his schemes. Cancel his attacks, cancel his strategies. Every way he came in to do us harm. I, oh God, restore today, God. Restore the health of your people, God. So much sickness is all around. But you said a prayer for it shall save the sick. Hallelujah. And the Lord will raise them up. Hallelujah. So many, oh God, are going through financial drought. But God, you are restored today, Lord. Hallelujah. Make a way. Where there seems to be no way. Let this be a day, Lord. That everything that was stolen from us, it will come back our way. Hallelujah. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together. And running over just like Brother Job. Hallelujah. He lost everything that he had. But amen. You restored the latter end of Job. Hallelujah. And gave him twice as, twice as much as he had before. God, you're still doing those type of miracles. We are believing you for restoration, God. Restore us in our bodies. Restore us in our minds. Restore us in our spirits, in our every being, Lord. Hallelujah. Every part of us, let restoration come today, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your word will never return to your void. You are a restoration, God. And we believe you for restoration, Lord. Work for your people today in a powerful way, in a strategic way. 
Oh God, in an awesome way, God. Hallelujah. So many of us have children that have backslidden. So many of us have spouses that have backslidden. Restore them to their God. We're claiming them back for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. Bring them back to the fold. God, bring them back. Bring them back. Just like you did for the prodigal son. Hallelujah. Bring him to them. You brought him to himself. Bring our children. Oh God, all the spouses that are not saved. Bring them to themselves to their God. And bring them home. Hallelujah. We are claiming restoration. Full force. Full force. Full force. Everything the enemy stole. Hallelujah. We are taking it back by force. In the name of Jesus. We claim restoration, God. Glory to God. Somebody give God praise for restoration. The mind, the body, the spirit. Hallelujah. Everything the enemy stolen. Hallelujah. This is our death for restoration. We heard the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are holding our force. We are holding the fort. We are holding on to faith in God. Amen. We are taking courage today. Amen. David encouraged himself and we are encouraging ourselves today. Amen. We refuse to be defeated. We refuse to be brought under. Hallelujah. Because the Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord is going to fight the battle for his children. And we are going to hold our peace. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. This is the day of restoration. And we give God praise for bringing back everything we lost and more. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give God a praise in the house today. A word in season. A word for the hour. Hallelujah. A word, oh God. We needed to hear it and we heard it, Lord. And we say amen. Be it unto your children. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word, and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.